the smaller the float, the higher chances of a possible squeeze and manipulation. Why? Because somebody big, smart money or big hands can simply buy the entire float and manipulate as much as they want. For those who do miss this, and you said you can always load the boat later over here, what do you mean by that? And when I'm looking at the daily chart or a intraday chart, I'm looking at mostly those days where the high volume was traded. Time of day is something a lot of traders don't think about. Would you take a minute and just explain why time of day is important to you? So what I tell you to do traders is always look for the key level because this is scaling in very small. If it goes down, that's fine. You can always recycle down here, but if it goes up, it gives you an extra opportunity and this was lucky for us to load the boat at a higher price. Everyone who's just heard Jay talk, you gotta, you're gonna rewind some of this and, and take notes because he just gave away a lot of information that you need to hear again and you need to make sure you implement some of these ideas. The three main errors that traders do is one, being stubborn. The second thing is cutting the wins or you take no wins or you simply cut your wins. And the third thing is that you simply fight often the price action. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Today is a great day. We're going to be diving deep once again into a trade, the mindset behind the trade, why the plan is the plan, and how to execute a plan very thoroughly with my friend Jay Trader here. So, Jay, welcome back to the show, brother. Good morning, everybody. Uh, actually, good afternoon because I'm here I'm in Italy. So, thanks for having me over here, Alex. Pleasure. Absolutely, man. So I want you to go ahead and take it away and let us know what we're going to be going into today. So before looking into the, the stock that I prepared for the day is I'm going to share some of the process, some of the secret sauce that I like to give out. Uh, of course, over here to the, to the guys that are following and the guys following Alex. Uh, the point is, when we're trading small caps, we always think that, you know, everything is going to go down. But it's not always like that because you can be right nine times out of ten one trade can kill you it happened to me several times i started trading small caps only late 2016 and 17 with smash with carford you know your good friend my good friend and when i started i simply tried everything out there and we were talking about late a fades all day fades uh squeeze a runner parabolic and it was a loss over a loss over a loss until I found personally a playbook. So what you're gonna see today is one of the setup that I call gap and crap. It's one of my copyright things that uh, it has certain specific criterias. When I saw this pattern, I started to avoid everything else. With time, I added a little bit more because the market changed as well. But from 2017 up till now, I had even some traders today trading the gap and crap. It still works effectively. So let me share with you guys and gals some good stuff today. All right, so we have over here a stock. This is uh, mid of September. Uh, we have a stock BJDX. It's a small cap. Like every single small cap, we think that, oh, it's a pump and dump. It's gonna fail. But there are certain parameters better than others for the short. So. I know the stats of this, and uh, we're talking about uh, microflow stock. So everything below 5 million float, float is the amount of shares you can buy actually in the market. And everything below the 5 million, I'm going to call it micro, uh, micro float. Everything below 1 million, which at that time this stock had less than 1 million float, is going to be called nano float. So we know that. The smaller the float, the higher chances of a possible squeeze and manipulation. Why? Because somebody big, smart money or big hands can simply buy the entire float and manipulate as much as they want. The stock has a low institutional ownership, which tells us that there are not too many, actually almost nothing because it had less, one, less than 1% institution ownership, own, um, owning the company. So if we have a comparison BJDX and Google, BJDX and Meta, you will see the difference in the institutional. And the more institutional we have, the more we can have traps and big players coming into the play that day. Another thing about the stock is that I use always the daily and hourly chart. 
But over here, I want to bring your attention at the five minute chart. And you can see what? This stock likes to extend, right? So this is a day over here, five minute chart, 26th of July. Extends and then fails on the same day. This other day over here, end of July, a big extension. This goes from five up until $10 and then fail all the way down on the same day. And we have another day over here, extension then fails. So we see that as a stock that is not really growing, but instead is a stock that is fading. And we're going to talk about this day over here. Quick so the question, first thing, you don't mind. tell me. What, what are the uh, arrows on this chart right here? What are because you have arrows everywhere? You have purple and black. Oh yeah, that that was only uh, intraday uh, bounce from the J lines and intraday rejection from the J lines. Oh, okay, okay. So those are other trades. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Exactly. So over here, my point is, I know that this uh, level is going to be a possible good level for uh, rejection because we have the price bounce over here, the price bounce over here. And then I'm going to look at other levels like this one over here, because we have the price that it rejected over here, it rejected over here. And when I'm looking at the daily chart or uh, intraday chart, I'm looking at mostly those days where the high volume was traded. For example, I will use volume profile, but it's not hard. You can even use only simply technical key level of supply and demand, so resistance and support. Hey, we wouldn't be able to do these face-to-face -face interviews if it wasn't for our sponsor, Cobra Trading. So if you can just give them a few seconds of your time, we'd really appreciate it. Cobra Trading is the go-to broker for day traders and short sellers. And I'm not the only one saying this. In fact, Benzinga awarded Cobra Trading as the go-to broker for short selling. They have a heavy focus on direct market access order routing, so you have the fastest execution. They have some of the best locate prices and availability. They also have amazing customer service. I've experienced many different brokers, and it's why I use them every single day and why I'm proud to have them as our sponsor. Sign up now by clicking the Be The Trader referral link below and earn one free month of software with Cobra and 25% off all commissions. Now let's get back to the show. This is what happened intraday. So as every single small cap opens and you will see or a cup or a pennant or a wedge. They open, news comes in, and they do this. And the major loss that I had when I started in small cap was the bias was good to short, but I was shorting too early, maybe on the first pops over here. And then I was adding thing that you don't have ever to do unless it's a plan to risk a key level or skill in. Sure. And then I was stopping out and the trade would have worked against uh, instead of me being in. So what I tell you to do traders is always look for the key level. And when you're looking at key levels, remember we had a six and 650. So you're looking at this level over here. Now, don't get me wrong. Not always you will have the level that is perfectly touched or you have a fake breakout like a bull trap and then a short from there. So you have to look what happens over here. You have to look what is the tape over here. And in this candle over here, there's the shift between buyers and sellers that I will explain you soon. At the point, if we zoom in over here, I'm gonna trace this. There we go. So this is the opening bar. And if you look at this opening bar, I will still zoom in. This remember is a five minute chart. I want that you focus in two things. Before the open, we have an inside bar. So this bar is a shooting star. Everybody will tell me this, Jay, this is the same thing as this. So we have a short reversal and I can tell you, yes, even over here, we have the same shooting star. Some traders will call it pin bar. They're both correct. But it really ha depends what happens at this key level, at this key level, at this key level. So before the open, we have an inside bar, shooting star. And over here, I believe that this is a big trap that big hands want to do. And why this happens? I saw this pattern very, very often. You will see a micro support, 
the price over here breaks down this level. So right away we have over here shorts getting in because shorts like to get in in the breakdown. Longs are stopping out. Big ends instead, what they're doing, they're absorbing. So you will see over here the, the tape running. So buyers stepping in front of each other. They're cleaning the ask and you start seeing this rise. At this point, you have the confirmation that this bullish engulfing candle is formed. And now you can simply look for that target, previous high, and then the six over here. So this one is, this is a washout long. I call it reverse J slim. Reverse J slim is essentially a very tight level. The price always dips. You have a fake breakdown and then you have this. It's about five years more or less that I trade this setups for the long, vice versa for the shorts. So whenever you're looking to long, don't long me on the breakout because this is as you know buddy where the pumpers will try to make you get in and then you will be stuck they tell you buy over here no the point is and let's be honest you have to buy dips once a place is uh, trapped in this case shorts and longs are stopping out that is the place where you want to long once over here a level is gone so the breakout and longs are trapped because everybody's buying up here, then on that fail, you want to look for a short. You can tell me I'm going to use order flow, I'm going to use tape, but essentially remember, don't follow alerts. And this I have to tell you because the, the pumpers will tell you buy over here. While they bought maybe over here and they're telling you buy over here because over here above 550, we're going seven. BS. This is the level where they will have traps. Or you buy dips, you can see over here where I have my arrows. They tell me long over here if you have to long. So when I have my members, I tell them the truth, not longing over here. Instead, this is a level that I'm looking to short. And you know, Alex, every single time we see this, you know that traders tend to follow alerts. And this is that what we did. That's from that day. So once we saw the fake out over here, and we started like to see this dump, we started looking for a short. And in this case, we scaled in. So opening bar is this one. That's sorry, opening bar is this one. So we have the fake breakdown. Over here, a trader can get long. It pushes to the highs and then slams below that pre-market high. So over here is true, you can get feelers, you can get starters, but there was over here at these lows, always a big bar coming in. It's something that only if we have the level two now going on or the other flow for next time we're recorded, we can spot it. There was a big order flow heat map. So for who doesn't know, uh, a heat map is a level of seller stacked. So imagine that at this sixth level, we had around 35, 40,000 share stack over there at six and then more 605. They were like blocking, tapping over here the price action. And it doesn't mean necessarily, okay, it's gonna reject. But we know we have seller place over there. Once over here happens that we have this breakout. So we have, again, chat pumpers trying to push this above five, nine and six. What happened? They flush. And that's your fake breakout or called bull trap. I like to call it J Slim, and you short over here. If you miss it, like we did in this case, you start taking small start over here, and when the price pops, then you load the boat, you set your risk, and then you calculate your R with the hotkeys that, uh, for example, we like to take the hotkeys uh, 2R, 4R, 8R. So I'm very curious on, on the, um, so you, you, okay, so you emphasize reading the tape, or at least looking at level two to make sure the difference between the first breakout that was kind of looked like a failure and the difference between the one that happened afterwards that was a failure was because I'm assuming that on the level two, the, that buyer just disappeared on the pullback. Exactly. Okay. So over here, I saw the last big buying pressure over here, but then it's like, it was like going up, going up, and a climax, boom. Somebody like really pulled the rug over here. Exactly. It simply like fell all the way down. 
And this was very fast. And that's the reason why we started taking over here small because we know that we were far from the high of the day. And generally when the price gets to the J lines, it generally dips and then can turn back up. So we don't want to short a full size position low. This is the mistake that a lot of traders do. They chase. Yes. You take 10%, another 10%, and then when you get into this area and you have your risk at six, so you're risking about an average of 40 cents, which is already pretty much, but you have to calculate the risk reward. Yep. You're looking for two bucks or one bucks and 50. So we're looking for at least three to four R. Then you can load over here. Hmm. Of course, this is the best level where to to trade, but you know, not always ha able to take the perfect top tick. And that's the reason why I want to share this because this is scaling in very small. If it yep. goes down, that's fine. You can always recycle down here, but if it goes up, it gives you an extra opportunity. And this was lucky for us to load the boat at higher price. Hmm. And so for those who do miss this and you said you can always load the boat later over here, what do you mean by that? Cause I mean like, cause let's say you missed this and you didn't were able to load the boat, but you got 10% of your position. That's it. And it failed, kept going. Like, what do you suggest to those traders? Like that's just part of trading. Like, Oh, well you just get 10% or like you could find another area. What are your thoughts around that? So if you find an area to trade, it's good. The levels that you will look are, the half dollar numbers because you know that players will be over there so five uh, fifty six and then you will look at the five dollars and you can see over here for example we go back at the 550 we have another fake breakout then right away they slam it down and you start looking how the price reacts after that fake breakout so you can start re-adding over here if you couldn't load over here on this pop you're trying to add always on pops. Hmm. Another thing, Alex, is that the same way we saw over here, this fake breakdown. You know, yeah. this is a beautiful washout for Birthday Slim Long. It happened again over here. So we see again, they trapped and then boom, right away they pushed it back up. They trapped. So every single time we see these fake breakdowns, don't enter short traders because these are mostly trap. Mm -hmm. Every single time you see that, Think more, okay, this is going to be an opportunity because the peaks, yep. here I'm going to short, here I'm going to short, here I'm going to short. You see another breakdown, here I'm going to short. So you always have to think the opposite of what the market is showing to you. That how you are above the hedge and not behind. Let's say you were going to take that position at the 550 level on that pop after the reverse breakdown. We did <laughs> Uh, no, uh, say that again. We didn't. I know, but let's just say someone, because you know, at that 550 level, you were explaining if you did miss your entry, but you could possibly get in on that pop at the 550. Would you suggest you still risk high a day at that point? No, you have to balance because over here now you're taking that trade at 550. You have 50 cents. You already had over here one time holding, second time holding. It's getting to 1015, 1020. And you know that if a stock tries and holds after 10.30, the open level, you can have some manipulation, some problems. Also understanding that this was a micro float. So the best for me would be having a risk more like this level over here. And even if, um, if you add full size, sorry, I would risk this level. If you take a feeler or a recycle from let's say this and you add over here, then you can risk this, but full size, I will risk just over here above. You cannot risk this much on stock that you already see they're trapping over and over and over. Yeah, that's a very good point. I'm glad you pointed that out in terms of time of day as well, because time yeah. of day is something a lot of traders don't think about. Would you take a minute and just explain why time of day is important to you? I made that back testing, so I use a lot of stats. And uh, as you know, I move into quant trading uh, with uh, my partner and uh, one of the reason why I want to short this stock is because by stat this had 78.9 79% fader on day one and I can tell you traders it's very simple I use stats back in the days so you take from 2019 
all the stocks between one and ten dollars less than 200 million market cap more than 30 percent gap less than 30 percent institutional ownership and with at least two million volume traded okay and you will see that more than 77 depends also from uh, short flows and uh, short percent of flows and others, but more than 77% of the time, you will have a fader. Now you have to see by 10.30, if the price is still holding the open level, is this gonna be still 76, 77, 78%? No, the uh, stats goes down significantly. So it means that it can still close red on the day, so below the open level, but it can trap and squeeze you more. <coughs> There are certain ways to bring the stats above even 80, 85 percent. But I mean, uh, another time, this is already like some good, uh, uh, good parameters that we give over here today. Absolutely, and, I, and you know what's interesting is everyone who's just heard Jay talk, you gotta, you're gonna rewind some of this and, and take notes because he just gave away a lot of information that you need to hear again, and you need to make sure you implement some of these ideas. And the whole time frame, man, I love that you said that because. I have found myself as well, like time, time of day is super important to me. And the fact that you just hit on that, like you use time of day with the statistics to show that the probability starts to tip, tip against you or not as great, it can give you a better edge on figuring out should you cut your profit short and so forth. Um, let me ask you this, man, before we start to wrap this up, I, I did want to ask you, when it comes to taking those losses, because I know you help a lot of traders out. Do you feel like a lot of traders struggle with actually taking losses or do you feel like it's maybe something else? I think that as human beings, we want always to be right. Mm. And uh, I have like a, a specific way to, to mentor traders. I'm very tough, but, and I'm always very demanding, but that's why I see also results. And I believe the three main errors that traders do is one, being stubborn. The second thing is cutting the wins and letting instead, the, uh, or you take no wins or you simply cut your wins. And the third thing is that you simply fight often the price action. Mm. So yes, the point that you said, buddy, is totally like that. Traders, they often cannot simply accept to lose. Instead, when you're a trader, you have to accept to lose. I was telling you before about the, the hedge fund I'm making, and uh, per certain algorithms that I have, the win rate is 50%, but the profit curve in the last 15 years is rising, 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 rising. So you don't need not, nothing like 90, 95% of the time to be a good, I would say, trader. Yep. You said work more in the risk management because it's, there are scenarios where you can have 80% win rate, and I saw them. But not everybody is gonna be able to do that. So with 50% or 40%, you can still yep. deliver some good alpha. Not everybody is Jim Simmons. Not everybody is not Renaissance. Not okay? everyone's J Trader, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm just a trader or uh, I'm just a trader, but I'm giving my two cents on what I, uh, read what I see with other traders talking Absolutely. to other traders. So that's I'm, my point. I'm teasing you, man. I love you to death. I know, I, buddy. I know. You know, at the end of the day, look, I, I know people are going to have more questions. How can they contact you, man? So you can contact me on Twitter, jtrader.co, or visit our website, jtrader.co, or see us in New York, April 2024, for a three days live seminar, and also at the stock, New York Stock Exchange with uh, Cobra and also in Denver in May. Awesome, well thanks Jay. It's always a pleasure talking with you, my man. Thank you, buddy.